In Pro Tools, as in most DAWs, there are two kinds of tracks that can be used to record MIDI performances, MIDI tracks and instrument tracks. For the most part, a MIDI track would be used to record a MIDI performance that triggers an instrument sound from an external instrument, like a keyboard or rack mount, synth, sampler, or drum machine. An instrument track would be used to record a MIDI performance that triggers an instrument sound from a virtual instrument plugin within the DAW. While synthesists and EDM producers would be likely to work extensively with external instruments and synths, most musicians would probably be much more likely to utilize virtual instruments. Virtual instruments are much easier to set up, requiring only the physical connection, the MIDI or USB cable, from the MIDI controller keyboard to the DAW, but no MIDI cabling back out to the real world to feed the MIDI recording to the instrument for sound and playback, as is necessary with external instruments. A virtual instrument sounds synth tones or samples, are stored somewhere on the computer running the DAW and need only a virtual connection for MIDI data to trigger them. I'll create a MIDI track and an instrument track in Pro Tools to illustrate using the standard New Tracks dialog. The instrument track will both record MIDI data and output audio from a virtual instrument plugin, so I'll make it stereo, since I want the audio from whatever virtual instrument plugin I choose to be stereo. But notice that the MIDI track has no mono or stereo option. Since the instrument will be an external device, the only thing contained in this track will be MIDI data. There's no audio, so the mono stereo setting is irrelevant. The audio from an external instrument would have to be routed back into Pro Tools in an aux track, again in stereo. In each track's MIDI I.O. section, I'll set the source, the MIDI keyboard or controller, and the destination. Let's start with the MIDI track. MIDI input always defaults to all. This means that any MIDI keyboard recognized by the computer and DAW will have its MIDI data automatically routed to the track. You can check to make sure your preferred controller is recognized via the MIDI option in the Setup menu. If it isn't, you'd have to access the computer's MIDI drivers to correct this. I'm on a Mac, so that would be done by selecting MIDI Studio, which would take me to the MIDI configuration pane of the Mac's Audio MIDI Setup utility, where I could make the necessary adjustments. On Macs, nowadays most USB MIDI keyboards and interfaces are class compliant, which means they should show up automatically when plugged in, without the need for any additional drivers to be installed. Back in the MIDI track input menu, all recognized MIDI devices should show up in addition to the All option. If you want to route different MIDI controllers to different MIDI or instrument tracks, instead of using All, you'd select the desired MIDI keyboard input for each track. For the MIDI output, you'd select the correct MIDI port on the MIDI interface in use to send the MIDI data for that track to the appropriate external hardware instrument. Notice there's also a channel setting. Many hardware instruments can generate more than one instrument sound at a time. Typically up to eight is common. This is called multi-timbral capability, and the way to choose the particular instrument you want to play the data from that particular MIDI track would be to output the track's MIDI data on the MIDI channel that matches the correct instrument sound's MIDI channel in the hardware instrument. The MIDI protocol allows for up to 16 MIDI channels per MIDI connection for this purpose. To bring the audio from the external MIDI instrument into Pro Tools, you'd need an aux track. Naturally, you'd plug the audio outputs of the hardware instrument into a couple of extra inputs on your audio interface and select those as the input for the aux track. So working with an external MIDI instrument actually requires two tracks. The MIDI track to route the MIDI from the controller through Pro Tools to the instrument, and the aux track to take the audio that's triggered from the MIDI notes back into Pro Tools, where it'll be part of the mix. Once these connections are made, you'd arm the track and then play on the MIDI controller, which would send the MIDI performance data into Pro Tools to be recorded. At the same time, the data would be sent back out to the desired external instrument for monitoring and later for playback. But note, when working this way, if the MIDI keyboard also contains the instrument sounds, as with a self-contained MIDI instrument, you'd have to make a MIDI setting on the keyboard to prevent double triggering of the notes, once internally from the keyboard directly to its own sound engine, and again through Pro Tools back out to that same sound engine. This setting is called Local Control. You can usually find it in the keyboard's utility pages, and it should be turned off when looping the MIDI data through Pro Tools. Setting up an instrument track is similar, but take note, MIDI I.O. is found in different locations for the MIDI track and the instrument track. Since the MIDI track only passes MIDI data, MIDI I.O. is set in the track's main I.O. area. 
but the instrument track also incorporates the audio from a virtual instrument plugin, so that main I.O. area is for audio routing from the plugin instead. There's a dedicated MIDI settings area at the very top of an instrument track. If you don't see it, you'll need to enable it via the Mix Window Views option in the main view menu. You'll see the same MIDI options for MIDI input and output, but for output, here you'd select the virtual instrument plugin instantiated in the top insert slot below. In fact, when you instantiate your preferred virtual instrument, Pro Tools will automatically select it for you as the MIDI output in that instrument track. Again, to play the instrument, you have to record enable the track. Down below in the audio I.O. area, the input would normally be set to off, since there's no external audio input needed. Sound is coming from the virtual instrument above, being triggered by the incoming MIDI data. And the output would normally be the main stereo out. Next up, a quick look at Pro Tools' virtual instruments. <laughs> 